Patrick, and we're going to do a tech video showing you how, how to install uh, our new charging alternator rotor on an XS650. So we've got a really nice uh, XS650. This is an 81 engine using the TCI uh, digital ignition. Um, it's a bone stock engine, 100% stock. Obviously, it's in a, a nice bobber, uh, rigid hardtail frame, but. All the electronics in the engine are bone stock, so that's what we really care about here. Um, we're going to show you how to do it. It's real simple. Um, you need one of our rotors, part number F650. They'll be available on our website pretty quick here. Uh, pricing will be coming soon. I don't have pricing set yet, but they'll be very reasonable. Um, make sure you have the correct flywheel puller for this job before you start, because you don't want to get the side case off and realize you do not have the puller. You will need it. Don't try and do it without the right puller, because you'll damage your flywheel or rotor. So anyways, I'm just going to give you a quick overview, and then we're going to get the bolts off, but real simple. Um, I think this engine has been swapped to Allen head bolts that mount the side cases. I think the originals were Phillips, so if you do have an older bike with a completely stock bolt set, um, you'll probably need one of those impact uh, impact screwdrivers that you hit with a hammer, because all, all the time the Phillips head bolts, if they're old and they've been heat cycled millions of times, they're going to be really stuck. So make sure you have an impact uh, screwdriver to get this out. Um, for us, this one's already been converted to Allen heads, be real easy. But you basically need to pull the side case here. Side case is dry, um, no need to drain any oil, worry about that. Um, pull all your bolts all the way around the side case. You do need to remove the shift lever here. Um, I believe this is stock, but I'm not positive. This one has an 8 millimeter uh, bolt in it. Um, your stock one may or may not, I don't want to guarantee that. But either way, you need to remove the bolt, pop off the shifter. You should also remove uh, the peg. Obviously, this one has a uh, custom peg made on it. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. I also don't know if this is the stock size. So either way, whatever you got, remove your peg and your shift lever. Pull all your bolts out the side. You're also going to want to loosen your clutch cable up at the top. So that'll give you some slack down here where the clutch cable enters the side case. And once you get all these done, just wiggle the side case loose and pop it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay, and then we'll so pick up from the there. Bolts out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the side case off. Real simple. Just pull it off. Let your clutch cable hold it. So now we're dealing with the stator cage and yeah. not much has to come off. Yeah. You need to remove the two uh, Phillips bolts that mount the stator cage to the side case. And then you need to pull off the little cap here, two Phillips, and then the two mounting Phillips that hold the brushes on. Remove that, 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 and that. And then pop the brushes out of the way, pull these bolts out, and then you can just walk the stator cage right off. So we're gonna remove that and we'll show you everything apart. And remove the mounting tab for the brushes, just so you have some extra room to work. Then, wiggle it loose, and you can walk the stator kit straight off and let it hang. Now we've got the rotor. You need to remove the uh, outer nut, which is very easy with an impact wrench. You can blast this loose, and then we'll use our puller on the rotor to pop the rotor off. And that's it. Now, take our puller. Thread the puller on. Ready? Yeah. I 
that's it. So now that we used our puller to pop it loose, pull the rate rotor right off the crankshaft. Now you have your wood rough key right here, which is what locates the rotor and keeps all your timing in place. So make sure, the key usually comes out very easily, so make sure you don't knock it out of place. You wanna make sure you leave that right there and do not okay, so lose that put key. put our new rotor on. Make sure you line up the keyway with the wood rough key. Line it up, slide it on, press it on tight. Looks good. Now put your nut or washer and nut back on. Screw it tight, and then we'll hit it with a couple taps uh, with the impact wrench to fully seat it. Now you don't need to do too much, but we want to make sure this is fully seated, so impact wrench is the best way to do it. And you'll watch the rotor walk its way onto the crankshaft. Now when you see it turn a little bit and the rotor no longer move inwards, give it another tap or two just to fully seat the nut and you're good. I'll do it. Right. Now another uh, tip, if you don't have an impact wrench, you can get this nut off. There's really no way to get the rotor off without a puller. Um, you can get this nut off uh, without an impact wrench. To do that, you can set on the bike, have all this off, put a wrench on this, and set on the bike and put the bike in about second gear. That'll lock the engine up, and then put the brake on as well to hold everything. That way you can push against this, and you'll be pushing against the, uh, the pistons, and it'll hold it in place enough that you can usually snap this nut loose. So just a tip, you don't have an impact wrench. You can also get this off, get the uh, use the puller without an impact wrench. You can do it with a standard wrench, it'll work just fine. Everything's easier with an impact, but you can do all this without one. The only thing you have to have is And now we're going to go ahead and put the stator cage back on. Line it up with your grommet down here with the wires. Then make sure you completely center the stator cage inside of all the fingers and you can see marks where the fingers sat before. Make sure you line it all up and then just tap it into place with your palms and then you'll feel it seat and look up here and make sure all the, the teeth are sitting against the stator cage and you can see here it's fully seated. The bolts will pull it the rest of the way in so that'll do it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put our bolts uh, back in. I'm going to get the stator cage mounting bolts in and then now we'll go ahead and put our brushes back in. Line up the brushes, put our mounting bolts back in. So everything pretty much only goes in one place. There's not really any way you can do this wrong. Anybody can do this installation at home without any issues as long as you have the right tools. And what's nice on the XS is you don't even have to drain the oil. So about as easy as it gets. Put the guard back on. Yeah, that's it. Now we're ready to put the side case back on, put all the bolts back on, and we're going to fire it up and check the charging system, make sure everything's working well.